Hello, I'm Rabbi Deborah Waxman, the president of Reconstructing Judaism, the central organization of the Reconstructionist movement. Let me tell you a little bit about our organization. We train moral leaders from a progressive perspective. The Reconstructionist Rabbinical College is a part of Reconstructing Judaism, and we are so proud of the more than 400 Reconstructionist rabbis who are serving in diverse settings and doing extraordinary work in the world. We support and connect communities that are affiliated with the Reconstructionist movement. There are about 100 of them around the world. And we also work with values aligned communities. We promote innovation through experimentation and on our digital offerings, especially our websites, ritualwell.org and Evolve Groundbreaking Jewish Conversations. Across the breadth of our organization, we draw on Jewish wisdom and practice to promote resilience. We work to advance racial justice both within and beyond the Reconstructionist movement, and we represent a Reconstructionist perspective in the public square. As Reconstructionists, we approach Judaism and life with deep reverence for the past and a passion to relate it to the present. We view Judaism as the evolving civilization of the Jewish people in an ongoing relationship with God. We take hold of the best that the secular society has to offer, and we integrate it into Judaism in thoughtful ways. Key principles of a Reconstructionist approach are egalitarianism and inclusion, and also democratic practice that's expressed most often in a strong partnership between rabbis and lay people through just and ethical behavior and transparent and effective communication. I'm so proud that Reconstructionists have originated many of the core innovations within American Judaism, including introducing the first bat mitzvah almost exactly 100 years ago. At Reconstructing Judaism, we work together with individuals and communities to share and create new ways of being Jewish, to connect us to the divine, and to ensure that our lives are full of purpose. So let's turn to today's teaching. I'm so excited to be with you. And I wanna to talk today about peoplehood and community. And I'm gonna begin with three statements and my teaching will unpack and explore these three statements. The first is that the term peoplehood did not exist in the common discourse until the 1940s. The second is that peoplehood is a non-halachic or a post-halachic rationale for Jewish life. And the third is that local communities are the mechanism to enact this rationale and to bring it to life in ways that are both meaningful and sustaining. So let's dive in. That first statement, the word peoplehood did not exist until the 1940s, and it was Reconstructionist leaders who brought it to speech. So when I say that the term didn't exist, I'm not arguing that the concepts that undergird it did not exist. For, for millennia, there have been concepts to express how the Jewish people are bound up together. Am Yisrael, B'nai Yisrael, Klal Yisrael, you could probably offer up others. These are all religious terms that for many have resonance to this day. The thing is, as religious term, that means that they place the Jewish people, here named as Israel itself with, with, with religious connotations, in relationship with the divine, almost always mediated through halakha, through Jewish law, which means that they don't necessarily work for Jews who are not religiously oriented, for folks who are secular, whether that's in the diaspora or chiloniim, secular folks in Israel. Peoplehood is a quasi-social scientific term that is at once pregnant with meaning and extremely elusive. And it emerged at a particular moment in time, out of a particular context, for a particular set of reasons. And I think it's worth unpacking all of that, both for the historical record and also because I think it can spark our contemporary conversation. So what is peoplehood? When I use that term and have to define it, I say that peoplehood means that the Jewish people share binding ties that cut across practice and also across national boundaries, that traverse time in a way that points to a shared history and we hope also a shared future. 
I think it's safe to say that peoplehood has emerged as the basis for Jewish unity across all of our diversity. Now, peoplehood is a quintessentially modern term, and it emerged in part to address the challenges that modernity introduced into Jewish life. There were many changes. I want to raise up especially the rise of rationalism and scientific thinking, and also the emergence of individual citizenship instead of corporate identity. These were especially challenging to religious conceptions, both of identity and community. And in the wake of these changes, religious authority was shattered and community coherence really fragmented. Modernity also introduced the separation for the first time of Jewishness and Judaism. And this separation created some opportunities and also introduced some really challenging situations. So peoplehood was part of what the scholar Lila Corwin Berman calls a social scientific turn to explain and to justify and to inspire Jewish identity. Its roots at mid-century, mid-20th century are fourfold. It emerged out of political philosophies, two, pluralism and nationalism. It spoke to the race politics of the first half of the 20th century, when the term Hebrew no longer worked to describe Jews, especially ethnic Jews. And it was part of the emerging social scientific category of ethnicity, which much to many people's surprise also was emerging at the middle of the 20th century. So peoplehood grew out of this ferment. And as I mentioned, it was reconstructionist leaders who brought it to speech in the mid 1940s. Rabbi Mordecai Kaplan was the founding thinker of reconstructionism. And he read widely and was a national leader and was in conversation with many of the leading thinkers, Jewish and secular of his time. His magnum opus is called Judaism as a Civilization. And when he published it in 1934, it was an effort to synthesize and build on all of these conversations. He was trying to come up with a rationale of how to be Jewish and modern, how to be Jewish and American, how to be Jewish and a citizen of the world. He was looking also to accommodate both religion and rationalism and humanism. And he felt it was critical to offer an antidote to chauvinism and to promote ethical behavior. So at the core of Kaplan's analysis and approach was a definition. It, he was interested in rhetoric. He put forward this idea that we should understand Judaism not exclusively as a religion, but as a civilization. Judaism is the evolving religious civilization of the Jewish people. This definition had a big impact, some criticism, a lot of embrace, and he was happy about that impact, but he wanted more. More than anything, he wanted people to not just embrace this understanding, but also to change their behavior in all kinds of affirmative ways. So he was pushing with, at a leadership conference in 1942 for new language that might be more successful at creating that behavior change. And it was out of that conversation that they came up with the term peoplehood as a complement to all of the aspirations of the term civilization. Once they brought it to speech almost immediately, they liked it and they started to use it very, very widely. And I wanna just reflect a little bit about why they liked it. Part of it was it was a corrective to the, the original definition of Judaism as a civilization because peoplehood expands and even shifts the focus a bit beyond civilization, that is the product of 3000 years of Jewish existence to the people, to the creators of that product. They liked it because it preserves and it even promotes an understanding of the diversity that exists across the Jewish people and throughout Jewish history. They thought that it could encourage an ethical philosophy of nationhood that would subvert more aggressive and chauvinistic forms of nationalism. They were all Zionists and they thought people who could stand alongside Zionism in an effort to foster collective Jewish realization without compromising Jews national citizenship in their home countries. And they thought it could also help to flesh out that emerging category of ethnicities for Jews, suggesting ways that it could be filled with contents and values. So in this way, they thought that people who could be not only descriptive, but also prescriptive 
to suggest ways that Jews could act. Reconstructionist leaders began to use the term in the 1940s in their own talks and their own publications, and it leapt into the Jewish sphere almost immediately. And by the early 1960s, it had shown up sufficiently in the American lexicon that it appeared in the 1961 edition of Webster's New International Dictionary. And when leaders of the Reconstructionist movement called up the dictionary folks to say, Where, what's, your, what's your source for that? They cited a Time Magazine article, a profile of Mordecai Kaplan on his 80th birthday talking about peoplehood. So I mentioned briefly that Kaplan's philosophy, including civilization and peoplehood, encountered a lot of embrace and also a lot of opposition from established authorities for a variety of reasons that unfortunately we don't have time to go into. That's faded. Peoplehood is now very widely adopted. It's robustly used by all of the folks who used to oppose it and more. It's ultimately been very widely embraced both in the American and in the Israeli context, and I, I believe in other places as well. And as I said at the beginning, it's an extremely plastic term. It can mean many things to many people. It can be deployed toward many ends. And this is both a great strength and also a pretty significant weakness. So now our second statement, peoplehood is a non-halachic or post-halachic rationale for Jewish life. In the Reconstructionist conceptualization, peoplehood is an alternative to, and perhaps a competing vision of Judaism as a religion, which for 2000 years united Jews under the standard of halakha, Jewish law, as interpreted by rabbinic experts. So in our Reconstructionist understanding, peoplehood is not an end in and of itself, Peoplehood is intended as a means for fostering ethical behavior by Jews, both as Jews and as human beings, and also as a way to communicate that expectation to non-Jews. Peoplehood in this way offers a reframing of Judaism as a non-credal religious civilization centered in loyalty to the body of the Jewish people throughout the world. It's about fleshing out what it means to be Jewish, which is essentially to identify with the Jewish people and to act in ways that advance the Jewish civilization and make manifest the ethical practices that can arise out of it. So that's how it's a post-halachic or even a counter-halachic way to shape Jewish behavior and to fill it with content and with expectations. What those ways are, are up to each individual. And that's some of the ways that democracy and diversity is preserved, that it's totally voluntarily, there's no hint of coercion. It is intended to be a mechanism so that we can be the best possible Jews, the best possible citizens, the best possible human beings. And in this way, it's about balancing Jewish particularism and a universal attitude. And because it's not a Hebrew term, it's also intended in a certain way to communicate all of this to non-Jews as well. This conceptualization is vastly ambitious and I think extremely empowering. And as I mentioned, there has been widespread embrace, both individually and organizationally. And that embrace has been mostly about peoplehood as an end rather than as a means. It has been about identification not about the content, not about the behavior, not about the articulation of values. And that's a problem because first off, I think it's, it's with even though this is about a collective, it's too individualistic because identification without content, without expectations, without relationship and obligation, it's not sustainable. There's nothing to pass on to the next generation other than just a sense of pride. And there needs to be more. So let me end with the third statement. Community is a means to enact peoplehood. I've stated as clearly as I can that it is essential to link peoplehood, that grand and inspiring yet amorphous concept with concrete practice. And I believe that we can do so through the building of local communities. As I said, peoplehood cannot simply be a concept or it's not sustainable. And I think in the long run, it won't be significant. The best way to bring it to life is through engagement with real people. There is a slogan that emerges out of the urban planning community, think globally, act locally. And that is so apt for this conversation. I'm not saying that peoplehood is co-equal with community. I am saying that I think peoplehood can be enacted through community. 
Mordecai Kaplan defined community this way. A community is a form of social organization in which the welfare of each is the concern of all and the life of the whole is the concern of each. We know there are many different expressions of community. There are communities of choice, communities of practice, communities of care. Today, I wanna to make the case, especially for diverse communities rather than niche communities of like people. I wanna make the case for those communities, frequently synagogues, there are other settings as well that are cross-generational, that are cross-interests, places where we can rub up against differences and learn from them. We can develop, we can gain capacity to better articulate our own beliefs and practices and stay in community with others. We can open ourselves up to transformation and growth through multiple encounters. In the end, it is community where we articulate and enact our commitments, where we voluntarily submerge our individual interests in the service of something larger, where we willingly hold ourselves accountable. Those are meaningful expressions of Jewish peoplehood. So throughout this talk, I've stayed in the realm of social science. Here at the end, I'm gonna revert back into religious terminology and pivot back into distinctly Jewish metaphors because I am most interested in sparking a conversation for and among Jews and the people who are making their lives with us. The metaphor I wanna offer up as a, as a complement to peoplehood is Brit, covenantal relationship between each other and in this engagement, we manifest the divine. And I wanna suggest it in the communal context. Covenantal community is demanding. It's substantial. It's transformative. It's the teaching of our ancestors. And I believe it's the path forward for the next generation. So may we all be strengthened toward covenantal relationship and toward building community in the service of bringing peoplehood to life. Thanks so much. Be well.